We are somewhere very special for this week's episode. Check it out. It's the planet Earth. It's the only known world in the universe with life. Come closer, you gotta see this. The rich biosphere you're seeing actually wreathes the entire planet, including a staggering variety of living organisms. Just recently, one of those organisms actually figured out that it's riding a rock hurtling through the vast solar system. Then it learned mastery over matter and the forces of nature and built cities and spaceships. And this thing, it's the tip of an enormous machine built to map the universe beyond and to search for other technological organisms out there and to send the messages. It's the Arecibo Observatory and today we bought a 180 camera to check out this incredible radio telescope. Let's go. We're right near the edge of the dish. In a second, Arecibo is going to fill your entire field of view. This is literally an entire valley filled with a radio telescope. And let me get out of your way so you can see this. That dish is 305 meters in diameter. It's impossible to build a steerable telescope this size, so Arecibo relies on some incredible ingenuity to allow it to point at different locations on the sky. Most telescopes, radio or optical, use parabolic dishes which bring light to a sharp focus, but only light from the direction they are pointing. Arecibo's giant dish is spherical, which means that it reflects light from every spot on the sky in a symmetric way. The round structure, the Gregorian dome, contains two reflectors that correct the blurred focus of the spherical dish and transmit the signal into a sophisticated suite of receivers. And that long thing? Well, it's all that Hurricane Maria left of one of the transmitting antennas. Yeah, transmitting. Arecibo is also a space radar that can bounce radio pulses off planets and asteroids as far as Jupiter, or send messages to the stars. Let's check out the dish below. We're now directly beneath the dish at the base of that sinkhole. Above our heads are nearly 40,000 aluminium panels perfectly aligned to create that spherical surface. As I said, it's over 300 meters in diameter. That's a surface area of 26 football fields. And no, you can't play football on the dish or skateboard, I asked. Next, let's get up on that platform. Okay, this is crazy. We're 450 feet above the dish itself on the catwalk that leads to the platform holding all of the secondary antennas, the receivers, that decode the message from above. We're going to go all the way up there, but you know what? I'm going to let you guys go first. Make sure you look all around, below you. The telescope is everywhere. Well, this is only slightly terrifying. We're standing at the top of Arecibo Observatory on a 900 ton structure, supported only by these cables suspended from giant concrete towers, but really anchored into the hills of Puerto Rico behind. And I'm kind of at a loss for words, so why don't you just check out a couple of the views? This is the catwalk that you just climbed. It's 50 years old, but hey, it survived 50 years of hurricanes. I wasn't scared. Look below you, that's the azimuth arm. It can maneuver on two axes to position the receiver within one millimeter precision of whatever astronomical wonder Arecibo is looking at right now. Okay, hold on to something and look straight down. That giant sphere is the Gregorian dome. It's like a six story high building that contains all of the secondary antennas, the receivers. In fact, Arecibo found the very first planet beyond our solar system. And it's been central to the search for extraterrestrial intelligence over the years. Actually, not just the search, it blasted out the Arecibo signal in 1974, and a new signal is currently being planned. We spoke to Dr. Abel Mendez, director of the Planetary Habitability Laboratory, about finding exoplanets, talking to aliens, and Arecibo's role in all of that. You can follow this link for that conversation. Let me tell you a secret. The Arecibo Observatory was originally conceived as a military facility. In the 1950s, the height of the Cold War, the arms race and the space race made it strategically important to really understand the ionosphere. It was conceived for war, but built for science. To me, Arecibo is our most powerful symbol of our emergence as a technological civilization. It's our most sensitive ear to the universe and our most powerful voice if we choose to use it. 
it may one day answer the question, are we alone? And it would change the world to learn whether or not we are the only living rock in all of space-time.